Good morning, Bucks, and welcome to Episode 6. My name is Chiana Williams, and here are our headlines. Seniors need to be in good standing with your attendants in order to participate in senior activities, including prom and graduation ceremony. Check your attendance. If you have more than 20 tardies, then you need to attend Saturday school. Senior attendance will be posted outside the vice principal's office, attendance office, and financial office according to your ID number. You can sign up for Saturday school in the attendance office. All students, connect to Careers San Diego paid work experiences for young adults ages 16 to 21. Stop by the counseling office for more information. Deadline to apply is March 30th. Now to the campus report with Bailey and Michaela. Did you know we have a robotics team led by our engineering teacher, Mr. Cannon, with help from Mr. Oka? The robotics team is an after-school club that not only builds robotic systems, but competes with them. Our team is fresh back from the annual first robotics competition held at the sports arena, where the competition was frisbee throwing and climbing. Again, our campus reporters met with Mr. Cannon and a few of the team members to talk about the club and the competition. Good morning, Bucks. We're here in the engineering room where robotics club is taking place. Yeah, we have an interview with Mr. Cannon and a, a few students. Now to our interviews. We are here with Mr. Cannon, the engineering teacher and the advisor for Robotics Club. So, Mr. Cannon, tell us a little bit about Robotics Club. Uh, well, Robotics Club uh, is here to compete in the first competitions every year. Uh, we just had our San Diego Regional last weekend that some of you may have seen on Friday. Um, <clears throat> uh, to get in, we're really always recruiting, so if you guys want to come by after school and check out what we're doing, that's always fine. Um, we're a little bit into the robotics season now. We have one more competition at the end of March, um, and that, that'll pretty much wrap up our season. But <clears throat> we're, we're going to keep trying to stay active throughout the year, as well as uh, try and recruit members and raise funds and everything like that. So how did you guys make your robot? Uh, well, it's a six-week process, so it starts in January. We came back a weekend early from break and got our challenge. And it's the same challenge that everybody gets all across the nation and the world, and it's released on one day. So we, we showed up at Kearney High fairly early in the morning and started working on it pretty much immediately after that. It's a six-week build season, so it ended right around the end of February, and then we kind of wait around, and it has to be uh, bagged up in that plastic bag until our competitions come around. Okay, thank you. Now back to Bailey, who's interviewing some club members. Hi, everybody. We're here with Nate, a freshman who's on the robotics team. So can you tell us why you joined robotics club? Well, because I heard about it from my friends and also other uh, people at school, and I heard that it was really awesome. So I came out, checked it for myself, and it was. I, apparently, you can make a bunch of robots, can put them in competitions, and see what they do. Sounds cool. So what's your favorite part of being in a robotics club? Well, there's different parts. Uh, you can either be a programmer, designer, assembly, and many, many more. But I like the assembly because I like to see how stuff goes together. Hi, everybody. We're here with Zach, who's a senior. So can you tell us how long you've been in robotics club? Uh, I've been in robotics club for uh, two years. I started my junior year, and this is my second year. Can you tell us why you joined? Uh, I joined because I'm interested in technology and I wanted to uh, build some robots. I also watched that uh, BattleBot show a lot when I was a kid, so I wanted to do it for that. What's your favorite part of Robotics Club? Uh, probably competition itself. I drive the robot as well as uh, another uh, junior here, uh, so that's probably my favorite part. That's really interesting. Hi, we're here with Hannah who's going to explain what this is. Hi, I'm Hannah. Um, so this is actually, we're making a practice robot. So we have our um, robot that we're using in the competition, but we're not allowed to practice with it or work on it at, right now. Um, so we're making another one that's going to be basically the same robot, um, but this one we won't bring to competition and we'll just use for practicing because we definitely need to practice aiming and shooting and all that kind of things. So um, what we have right here, this is basically just the base structure. We're starting to get some of the wheels on and we have um, a little bit of the, of the electrics on. These are victors, they'll control the motors and this is like the power distribution um, and stuff. Whew, just watching them work made me tired. Bailey, you're lazy. I know. Anyways, learning about Robotics Club was so interesting, and that robot, amazing. Yeah, they're making a practice one, and it looks so cool. I know. Made me want to join. But they're always looking for new people to join, so just come down and join. It's in room 165. Back to the studio. Now that winter sports is behind us, it's spring sports time. 
In Admission Bay, that means baseball, softball, badminton, boys volleyball, swim, golf, track and field, tennis, and of course, continued surfing. For an overview of spring sports season, we met with Athletic Director Coach Palacios. hit of the season is a home run. Woo! I don't know who you are, but go ahead, boy. Um, I would slide just for the fun of it. The funny part is, is for baseball, all you need is one umpire. Congratulations to the following student athletes for their exceptional performance in Saturday's Elmer Runge Invitational at Patrick Henry. Aaron Cobbler, second in the 110 hurdles and third in triple jump. Jojo Griffin, first in the 300 hurdles and third in high jump. Devon Martin, first in the 300 hurdles. Jasmine Leonard, first in the 400. Kyra Forsyth, third in the 100 hurdles and 300 hurdles. Jaya Parland, first in the 100 and 200. Adriana Roca, Bianca Sanchez, Alberto Salazar, all PR'd in the distance races. And now to dab meet with the weekend report. Hi, Bo.
Lex, I'm Domni with your weekend report, and now let's take a look at what's in theaters this weekend. We have Oz the Great and Powerful, which is about a mischievous magician who gains the wisdom to become a powerful ruler after being swept away to a land of magic and mysteries. Sounds like a cool prequel to The Wizard of Oz, so if you like that, maybe go check this out. It seems like a fun movie. But if you want to stay home this weekend, we have Lincoln coming out on DVD. We mix some history, have some fun, invite some friends over, and you know, rent that DVD, check it out. And tell me, because I want to watch these, give me reviews. And in Buck Cafe, we have new products. We have Snapple drinks all for a dollar. We have apple, fruit punch, and orange mango. Sounds delicious. And if you want to make it a combo, you can have hot and spicy beef soup, which is also a dollar, and a Snapple for two dollars. But if you want to keep it low and get a snack, we have corn nuts for 75 cents and shrimp soup for 50 cents. So go check out those new products, which are in the Buck Cafe now. And have a great weekend, Bucks. Great spring break, and see you next time. I don't know, like, this is so awkward. The junior class has pulled off another great talent show this year with a record crowd, a host of judges, and a great lineup of student talent. Here are a few highlights of the show featuring the three finalists. Hey, sale in the media center for three dollars help support school activities and stop by to purchase your dvd one story behind the scenes of the talent show is the fashions makeup and costume worn in the acts for another fashion and trend segment here's amelia and vanessa with the story. good morning bugs we're here in the dress rehearsal and we're going to be asking people about their style so now let's go check out what they're wearing. So how did your outfit affect your performance? Um, well, we chose our outfits so that we could fit our characters because we're doing a line dance. So we just wanted to look like we were from the country or from like the West or yeah, right? The South. That's what it's called. So we're here with our second performer. So is there any reason behind why you chose this outfit for your performance? Well, basically, this is how I normally dress all the time. So there's not really much difference for me. But I, um, I'm a pinup, so that's the way we dress. 
not a lot of people know how to dress like this, you know, they don't really have a sense of style like that. Yeah. So do you get your certain inspiration from something that you see or? Is well, my inspiration uh, has been my family. We're all practically greasers and pinups. Not only that, but um, Betty Page. Betty Page is my biggest inspiration I ever had. How does your outfit of Baker performance? Um, our song is mostly about um, love, so we chose a red color to kind of yeah. um, symbolize that. Yeah. And um, for as for the pattern on my tie and her dress, she basically just picked a dress and she sent me a picture and was like, "Go pick out a tie." Yeah. So I was. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the whole kissing in the moonlight thing. It's just all. It's like it's just a love song about just like taking it easy, just. With well, the kids in the moonlight, so like, I don't know, I think red kind of symbolizes that. Yeah. I see the pattern on your dress. Um, why did you get a pattern instead of a simple, just red dress? Um, I don't know, I didn't put too much thought into that, but I don't know, I think it'd be a little too plain. I, I like things to be kind of more fun, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. So we're here with Vader. So, right, so is there any reason behind why you guys chose to wear this outfit for your performance? Um, well, you know, Isaac really inspires me to dress the best as I can. He's always fancy and I love it, but I just can't outdo him because he's just too fancy. So I tried to do like an, like an urban fancy, you know? So are you guys going to be matching or something? Like are you guys going to be wearing different colors, different, you know? Uh, well, I'd like to start calling him. Go ahead. Him, sorry. Go ahead. You know, I mean, uh, I dress according to my mood, so I can't really tell you now because I gotta find out what mood I'm in before the, the show. Because, I mean, like, if I'm feeling, like, depressed, you're like a little saddle, wear some dark blues, you know, some blacks, but I mean, like, if I'm energetic and, and ready to perform, I'll probably be wearing, like, a red or a yellow. So, I mean, you guys will know now. I, I, I gave away my secret, but, yeah. I might do the opposite, where if I'm super sad, I might wear like an eccentric yellow or maybe a, a bright red, and then like if I'm just not feeling it, you know, I just I don't even know. I might just wear white, just all white, white everything, everything. They're liars. We're not actually gonna match at all. <laughs> so did you guys get any like inspiration or anything from like bands that you guys saw or anything? Um, I read this book one time when I was in elementary school called. Bunnicula about a vampire bunny and that really inspired me because there's a lot like of stuff going on in the bunny's life and I just I don't know just the music just really <laughs> got inspired from that okay. well thank you guys and we wish you great luck with your performance and thank well you. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you back to you back to you <laughs>